electrical impulses. Every cell knows and talks to every other cell. They exchange a thousand bits of information between them per second. Cells group together, forming a giant web of communication, which in turn forms matter. Cells get together, take on one form, deform, reform. Makes no difference, it's all the same. Humans consider themselves unique, so they've rooted their whole theory of existence on their uniqueness. One is their unit of measure, but it's not. All social systems we put into place are a mere sketch. One plus one equals two, that's all we've learned. But one plus one has never equaled two. There are, in fact, no numbers and no letters. We've codified our existence to bring it down to human size, to make it comprehensible. We've created a scale so that we can forget its unfathomable scale. But if humans are not the unit of measure, and the world isn't governed by mathematical laws, what governs all that? Film a car speeding down a road. Speed up the image infinitely, and the car disappears. So what proof do we have of its existence? Time gives legitimacy to its existence. Time is the only true unit of measure. It gives proof to the existence of matter. Without time, we don't exist. Well, time is our only measure of existence. As a chiropractor, I'm most concerned with how your health influences that time. We can all agree that life passes us by really quickly. And that when we struggle, it's really hard to enjoy that time. When patients come to me, they often have symptoms. Concussions, migraines, chronic pain, ADHD, autism, the list goes on. And that starts to define them. But the one thing that they all want to know is how long until I'm better. See, we all want things very quickly in life. We want to be better quickly, we want to get more money quickly. But everything takes time. In order to tell you how much time it might take for you to get better, in my office, I use heart rate variability. And that test measures the distance between each beat of your heart. Your heart is controlled by the world's fastest messaging service, your nervous system. It tells each cell how to communicate with each and every other cell. So your body has health, so your body has coordination, and so you can live your life. When we come to the end of our lives, we realize that health is on a spectrum, that we didn't just get sick one day, that we're neither fully healthy nor fully sick at any time. We're always somewhere in between. Life's dynamic, right? So what if there was a test that could show you exactly where you were at and what we should do to take you where you should be to live the life you want? That world's fastest messaging service, your nervous system, basically has two parts, the speed up and the slow down, the gas and the brake. So when you're nervous and your video doesn't work in your presentation, your heart starts beating a little bit faster. <laughs> when you need to rest, digest, and heal, your heart has to slow down. And health is the balance of all of this. You have to be able to speed up and slow down with ease. And heart rate variability tells us exactly how efficiently your body is doing that. But the problem becomes with your health is if you always are stuck on the gas, most of us in this room are probably always stuck on the gas. We like to go, go, go. Society moves really fast around us. We often feel like we can't keep up. So if you're stuck in the go mode, you can see symptoms start occurring, such as increased heart rate, increased blood pressure. When we slow down, we also have symptoms like acid reflux, fibromyalgia, these are very common illnesses that cost a lot of money. And so today, my hope is that we can invest in the silent moments between our heart so that you can protect your wealth and you can solve many of the regrets that people have at the end of their lives. And those regrets are, I wish I'd given more to others, I wish I had taken better care of myself, and I wish I had more time. So with a simple test, we can solve these regrets. The test looks a little something like this. It's really easy to perform. It's just a heart rate belt. 
I push you through a series of some tests and we get these really nice pictures. When we look at the line that's going upwards towards the ceiling, that's the sympathetic line, that's that gas line. And when we look at the line going horizontally in this direction, that's the slow down line. There are three quadrants people mostly fall into. Quadrant one is the normal zone. Quadrant two is the chronic zone, so problems that have been there for a really long time. And then we move down into this quadrant, which is the pathology zone. So disease processes or chronic fatigue that have been there for a really long time. Most people come into my office in the chronic zone. They're very sick, they're very tired, they spend a lot of money on trying to get healthy, and they're looking for answers. So we're trying to figure out, do you have low heart rate variability or high heart rate variability? And it gives us this nice little graphical representation here. Are there any elite athletes in the room? Nobody. They would be up here. Sick people come in down here. They're not adapting and they're not balanced in their health. They're super stressed. How many of you guys feel like that sometimes? <laughs> Just can't take anymore. And see, your nervous system's controlling that. It's allowing us to adapt to all these external forces. And we can't escape the external forces, but what we can do is make ourselves healthier so that we can adapt to those external forces. See, we can't just base your health on symptoms. We need to base it on a test that can give us graphical information of where you are. So there's ways to improve your HRV. We can do deep breathing like we did at the beginning of the talk. We can decrease your stress. I mean, that's the easy one, right? Get rid of all financial, all kids. I know we're not stressful at all to our parents. But we can also increase positive emotions. Joy, love, gratitude. So why don't we all collectively in the room try and raise our HRVs right now? Is that okay with you guys? Awesome. I want you to turn to the person next to you and tell them you are amazing. <laughs> See, look at all the gratitude and the love and the laughter we have. Are you guys feeling more energized? Are you feeling healthier? And lastly, the one that most people don't get done is remove brain stem interference. I'm not going to talk to you all about chiropractic today. But if you have interference in your life and you can't stay coordinated, would you agree with me that your HRV would lower and that you would struggle and that you would be on a search for answers and that you'd even potentially lose hope? And that's the worst, right? When you can't find answers and you lose hope. What does better HRV do for us? It helps us respond to stress better. So if our bucket's emptier, we can take more. We can take the good with the bad, the life lessons. We can heal better. So imagine if you got sick, but you healed very quickly. Would that be awesome? And what if you slept better? That would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> If we could just sleep just like a little bit better. And that's one of the benefits that people see in my office is they sleep better. And when we can sleep better, we can handle more. We might even be able to solve Facebook problems one day. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, when we struggle and we search for answers, and we can't find them, we lose hope. And we don't want to go to one more doctor to find answers. But when we measure that time, that distance between each heartbeat, we can provide you with those answers. We can see how long it's going to take you to get better. We can see things that are interfering with your health. And we can give you solutions. So today, well, we only briefly talked about HRV. 